The suspect in Tuesday's subway shooting in Brooklyn is now in police custody. Frank James was arrested this afternoon in Manhattan, ending a 30-hour manhunt that followed the shooting, which left 10 people injured. Just before the announcement, New York's WNBC released video appearing to show him entering the subway on Tuesday morning prior to the attack. James was taken into custody following a Crime Stopper tip, which police sources believe James called in himself. He is now charged with a federal offense of a violent act on a mass transit system and will appear in court tomorrow. Officials said his motive remains unclear but and had no indication of, yet of why James targeted the particular subway stop in Brooklyn Sunset Park neighborhood. But in now deleted YouTube videos, James had discussed violence, talking about death and a race war and the desire to exterminate certain groups of people. New York's Asian American Federation called Tuesday's shooting trauma visited on a neighborhood that in so many ways is a wonderful microcosm of what makes New York City great, noting that it's home to Brooklyn's Chinatown, as well as a large Hispanic population, a multiracial working class neighborhood. And joining me now is Congresswoman Nidia Velasquez of New York, who represents the district where the shooting took place. Um, thank you so much, Representative Velasquez. I appreciate you being here. You know, I, being having lived in New York and being born in, in Brooklyn, um, I am sensitive to this idea that there was a time in New York when walking around as a black person in certain areas, you just felt afraid, whether it was of a police or other people in neighborhoods. You know, you're, you're talking about that era when that when, when those kinds of things happen in places like Howard Beach, et cetera. But now, you know, Asian Americans are feeling particularly vulnerable. And this community, it's called Little, it's called Brooklyn's Chinatown. It's 34.8% Asian. It's 35.6% Hispanic. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about that, how that is resonating, this fear that Asian Americans have already had, and now hearing that this person had, you know, lots of angry thoughts about Hispanics on his page, how folks are feeling in your district? Definitely. Uh, thank you, Joy, first and uh, foremost, for having me and discussing an issue that is so important to New York uh, New Yorkers, but particularly immigrant communities. You know, immigrants have been dealing with the emotional toll of the pandemic. Uh, they were impacted more than any other groups. Uh, and the economic consequences of the pandemic. Also, prior to that, the immigration rhetoric uh, that was coming out of the previous administration. And so uh, from being a Chinese virus to people getting knocked down just for being Asian Americans, and now, you know, right there in the middle of Sunset Park, in the heart of a heavily immigrant community, to have this experience relieving so much and so much pain that they have been encountering for so long, uh, it's it, it, it just uh, too much to bear for the Asian American community and for the Latino community in Sunset Park. You know, and just look. Well, just looking at that, that video, I mean, it's a, it's a very multiracial group of people who ran off of that train in this area, given who lives there. You know, it is notable. You know, my, my, my youngest uh, child sent me, a, my youngest son sent me a, a, a TikTok the other night, uh, last night, that, that, you know, really highlighted just how many Asian Americans were on that train running. I can't imagine after having already dealt with the fear of being on the subway because of the attacks on Asian Americans. Now this happens. It's very compounding. Um, and, and I wonder what you make of this prospect of putting more police on the subway trains. There were no officers there. I understand the cameras weren't working properly. There's a lot of issues there. But the idea of putting more police in places like this that are mainly immigrant and communities of color, what do you make of that idea? Well, uh, Joy, I, I think that we need to approach the issue of gun violence in, in our cities and across the country. And we have seen an increase of uh, violence in those communities. But also, we have to understand, we have to deal with this in a holistic manner. It's just not guns and, and the need for Congress to pass stronger gun legislation. But it's safety issue, it's housing issue, is homelessness. So all that combination, just to have police presence, is not enough to tackle the issue of violence in our communities, our cities, and across the country.
And, and I, so I take it you would not be in favor if the Supreme Court— I mean, what would happen if the Supreme Court were to basically throw out New York's gun laws? What would be the result? Well, again, I, I think that we need to use the best resources that we have, and that is uh, to have, uh, you know, working with the police department, but uh, we need to involve stakeholders, community-based organizations that have a history and a record in tackling the issues of gun violence. In my district, in Williamsburg, I have an organization, Los Sures, who are violence disruptors, and they have been quite successful. In fact, when President Biden and Mayor Adams held an event in New York City, I, I was there, and I told them that we needed to get more people involved to bring more uh, 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 stakeholders to deal with mm -hmm. this issue of gun violence in our communities. Congresswoman Nidia Velasquez, thank you very much. I um, really appreciate you being here.